I'm gonna try and get some get some uh, pressure away from Fantasy's face. I think we're finally going live now, by the way. I think the madness of filling can take a rest. Yeah, I mean, that's what you want, right? After a quadruple overtime is to come back in and fill and like fill for 30 minutes. minutes. Yep. It's really Brilliant. Great. Brilliant. We stayed mostly on topic. I feel like we did pretty good with that. We're yeah, only, only about four F-bombs for dust, so uh, two. We, we kept it below 10 at Can least. we do two? Can we... Everyone likes to exaggerate numbers, man. It definitely wasn't two. Like someone said we took a half hour break between games. Definitely only 15 minutes. <laughs> All right, so we are actually live. No knife round shenanigans. Oh. Hasn't taken anyone down though, which is going to be an issue. Like that's that's the difference between CS and uh, Battalion 1944 in terms of nades. That even if you land a sick nade, if it doesn't get the kill, it really doesn't matter if the player is able to regen. Ooh, Cinda with a great entry there with the B A R on the face of Davy Iga coming in as well with the default class, and this bomb is going down, no question about it. But can the Albino Cats make the retake? Looking a little rough. They only have two players left. They might just save at this point. Yeah. Might as well hold into the scope in the STG. Ain't no way they're breaking yep. into that site. And that's one of those things we need to talk about on this map, by the way, while we have a little bit of a moment here while this save kind of goes down, is that set and aid, like, this map is so much different than the others because you must cross middle as an allied team to attack into the B bomb site, which is the cinema bomb site. So because of that, allies will very often set and aid it, which means you either have to get absolutely erect if you try to go for a quick pushover towards cinema and then you lose numbers and you're at a disadvantage immediately or you have to slow down concede space to basically the allies to allow them to push cinema and push broken building and get in your face while you have basically a slower timing to actually go hit that b bomb site so there's a lot of mind games that go on to that because not every round is a nade coming but you always have to respect the fact it could be there also obviously a territory that provides for a lot of sniper battles but of course, sometimes allies will look to smoke by tank and block off the Axis sniper. So there's a lot of mind games that go on at middle, basically, is my point. So that is definitely a hot place of contest that you'll see pretty much all game. Well, so far, relatively undeterred in terms of grenades. Very little is landing. It's quick. He landed that no scope. That'd have been out. That'd have been disgusting through the smoke as well. Didn't though, so everything's all good. Justice has been maintained. Puckis, though, doesn't care about your slow shenanigans. He's going to get up in your face with the Thompson. It's looking to spray around the corner. The smoke is going to skew his aim and his sight, so he's not able to get that kill outright, although Alapop's gone down all the same. So a bit of a carbon copy of a round. Fast yeah, play sure. onto the site, but Davey around the backside is going to get two before Aiga shuts him down. Three on two, though. Really well done here by Penta to go ahead and have the main advantage here on this retake. Cordy and Supreme looking to try to break through, but Cordy with the scope, it can be very hard in those close quarters battles you need to take. Try to retake here. They do smoke cinema that eliminates one angle of attack, and they try to swing in, but Cinda with the Thompson will cut Supreme off at the pass. And now it's just Cordy with the scope, and Cinda goes in on him as well. And Penta's attacks on B have been rock solid so far. So I was talking to Froster before the game. He definitely told me to look out for Cinda and Puckus. Those are their two SMG players are the ones leading a lot of their attacks. Those are the ones that are going to be doing the heavy lifting as well as, of course, Replan, who is a fantastic scope, but he actually hasn't really broken out yet. He's been playing a lot of default class through these first couple of rounds, and he'll continue that trend. So they have those added smokes for their execute at middle and towards B. They've really done a great job like smoking off double doors and back doorway and making it very hard for Albino Cats to see much into that cinema sun. Well, it's more of a declaration of intent as well. We're really planning not bothering to go for the sniper rifle. It suggests they want to go for faster hits, but Alipov is there, and he swats away two players before they can get anywhere near the site. It's going to cause a lot of problems now. Make it a third to boot. Davi, Davi, Davy even, comes through with a kill. Supreme with the last two with his shotgun. So we've had Replan and Davi. I'm pronouncing all the names wrong today. GG. Wait, what? It's not Davy? You what, mate? I said Wait. Davi. So oh, strong. you said Davi. I thought you were trying to say that it's supposed to be Davi, and that we've been saying no, Davi no, no. this whole time. I was like, what? Definitely not. You just thought okay. the guy the guy that's played COD 2 for years and then COD 4 would probably be able to pronounce his name right. He's a bit of a legend. Nah, I'm just yeah. trash. Also, a reminder, a lot of people don't know this, but Vince has actually met us from the COD 4 days. So if you're from COD 4, you would know him as that name. Just throwing that in there real quick, as we are going to see a sniper duel perhaps breaking out here on middle. Cordy trying to find it with the scope, but in fact, it's just that nade's doing the damage right now. Oh, the prone spray. Replant is able to take Davey. 
off his perch of the fire escape. He's watching for the the uh, flank, I should say. No one's going to be coming there anytime soon. The Axis are more than happy to stay in position for the time being. They don't have any nades to draw out the, the bomb, though. That's going to be an issue. So they're effectively giving up this plant. Supreme's not even bothering to go all the way around the back. There's still a minute to play with. That could be in the back of their mind. It could be a fake. But now that the smoke has gone down on double doors, I think that's pretty much going to give the play away. And a tap yeah, on the site. The too. Tox Shade's going to go for a quick peek. Doesn't find anything, but he's going to keep his head for the time being. Alipov smokes still, but Tox Shade does get the kill to Cinder anyway. That could be a bit of a blunder. Replant does come back with his own kill, though. But with 35 seconds left, at this point, faking the bomb isn't going to be enough. They're going to have to start to think about planting it outright. And now, there is a flank coming in. Supreme decides that his course is to try and get round the back of the Allies. 17 seconds. Replant's really confused planet. right now. He's slowly crept all the way through basically any spawn location someone might have, but it's all from the broken building Supreme with the scope, and there's no way he's planning now. He has to go for the kills. Replant looking to push ticket, gets that kill, but no way he'll get Supreme. So he'll just run away, and I just felt like they got stalled out for way too long on that B-bomb, because they've been so successful on the initial hit, and some of their initial trading, and how they're using their smokes, but there, they got held up for a good amount of time. And I think part of that was, wasn't it... Uh, Alpov, who like kind of pushed short and got a couple of kills, that was also pretty big early on. The set nades slowing them down also played an effect. So, definitely a lot going on in that round. Again, though, it comes back to indecision that ultimately cost them that round because if a 3v3, they had a smoke on the arches, they could have gone for the plan, having one player watching the back. Lots of damage has been done to Replan, who now has picked up the sniper rifle. So maybe to slow things down a little bit, going to peak second mid. Nowhere near as much aggression on the B side, which is seeing Davey, Alipov, and Toxia all here. So they stacked three players on B. Quirty's watching mid, and Supreme's by himself on B. But we also saw in the previous game of Coastal that Supreme was just fine to hold B by himself there. I feel like this is more of a default from Penta. They keep playing Aiga in top cinemas. So that's been kind of his common spot. So they're leaving him to do that, but they're also really putting more emphasis towards alt mid and in the A doorway with three of their other players. Replan does have the scope this time around. I think that's that's definitely another declaration of intent. Like, when you see Replan with the scope, you know it's going to be a little bit slower. They want to give Replan a chance to look for picks, and he's actually pushing up all mid, trying to do just that. He's going to be checking the main entrance of the church right now, checking out the walls, admiring its architecture. In the meantime, Frosters are already pushed through Tram into the graveyard, so definitely an A split seems to be on the horizon. Maybe I could just look into Lurk, and because some rotates a little bit later or get behind them. Yeah, I think it's all about getting behind them once the chips have started to fall. But that is very much on the proviso that the rest of his team can even get on church and get the bomb planted in the first place. They've already lost the first. There's only 20 seconds. I'm getting a bit of deja vu from the last round here. Obviously, last time around, it was a three on three. Now it's stacked way further against them. Replan has landed a kill. And it's going to be a nade throw. Now Froster with two. And now Iger is going to strike from the backside. And he's keeping Toxie kept well away at arm's length from the site. And Toxie is out of there. He may very well try and flank all the way around the side, maybe get something going here, but just as well, he could also just save, really. This round yeah. looks like it's pretty much done. Does seem that way. I mean, they're certainly getting a little bit scary. Like you said, a lot of time being used up by Penta to make that play, being very patient, very calculated, maybe a bit of indecision, but it also just could be them trying to be very cautious and make sure they clear everything, make sure they're working together. But it does leave that window open that if you make just one mistake, just one misstep, can kill the clock to where you can't get that bomb planted. Uh, and so that's something you do need to probably kind of keep an eye on, make sure they're, they're managing it properly. That round, it worked great. I mean, Frosser with the shotgun pushing graveyard does good work. Replin able to kind of help control the site and get that bomb down. So certainly well worked out by Pimsa, but it certainly kind of left you wondering, maybe they might just run out of time. Thought I was watching Navi play Counter Strike for a second, like old Navi. <laughs> like, or yep. better example, flip side tag. This would last four years. Oh, Jesus, please, no. Blade. Anyway, I, th only I thought I'd escaped that, that nightmare. <laughs> definitely but, the most boring team ever to watch in Counter Strike. Oh, no yeah. doubt about it. Anyway. But I, I definitely agree. I mean, me getting down to 10, 15 seconds each time, it just takes one flurry of kills and. Things can go pear-shaped real fast, but it's going to be another B heavy hit fast. Up close and personal, Alipov's going to be priming an A to toss out onto the site, but Froster doesn't care about your HE. 
He's gonna pounce through anyway with a shotgun. And the blast will lay him to rest. Froster is gonna be holding the tickets while Quirty and Supreme peace out to save their cards and their weapons. So another round is uh, gonna go the way of the allies. Indeed it is. It's just working really fast on B. Again, a big change of pace. We were kind of faulting them for being so slow on the A side of the map and almost running out of time. This time they really kind of shift it into a different gear, rev up those RPMs and just you know, bludgeon their way into that B bomb site. Again, I also like the fact that Penta does have some very well established set smokes on these default class players. You know, you're seeing Replin and Iga use it for that very purpose which is they put a smoke on double doors by ticket, and they put a smoke on that back doorway. And so basically the only defenders you have to worry about are the ones that are actually in the site itself, or maybe someone who might have pushed bottom cinema, but Iga's usually kind of clearing that out and playing from the top and making sure that they don't need to worry about getting shot in the back from cinema. And at that point, you know, as long as you're, you're overwhelming the one or two guys who are physically in the site and you're trading well, you're going to get that bomb down, and you're going to have the advantage on the retake. So they're doing that really well, and they also haven't been too hindered by any type of set nades at middle. They've always been smoking by tank as well, making sure that, uh, you know, Cordy's not able to scope them at middle or anything like that. So it's just been well-calculated offense from Penta. I mean, you got to give your hat off to them for that. Yeah, now they're mixing it up again. This time it's going to be a fast rush through second mid. Already claiming the life onto Supreme, and we discussed this before, that he was ultimately playing B by himself with Quirty in mid. This time, Quirty was more watching towards the back of tickets. So, Cinder's going to be using the initiative to force through with his Thompson. Buck is down to 12, has to relocate, and see if he can come back with some kills, but Quirty actually pushes the smoke. It's not going to work out for him. Cinder with two kills with his SMG. Leaves Toxie once again in a one-on-four. He's been in this position a couple of times, and nothing he could do. Penta, they look like a well old machine on their allied side. They really are. You can definitely tell that they're well drilled and well practiced on some of these executes they have up their sleeve. Just uh, definitely good coordination. Again, good use of utility. Not letting Cordy really establish himself with the scope at middle. Not really letting nades bother them. Their utility use has been far better than Albino Cats. Definitely can tell that they've kind of earned. Oh, okay. Ooh. Rest in peace. As soon as I um, say something about mid nades not working, obviously Casper's Curse. Somehow Replit survived with 1 HP. And yeah, Repon survived the nades pretty much to his dome. God, I got some Replin. Uh, Replon's gonna push in. Alapov on tickets. Two players at the back of double doors. That smoke is gonna pretty much neutralize any of the vision that the bulk of the Axis have. The problem really comes in that once that smoke clears, which it has now, there's really nothing to follow it up. They weren't able to get the bomb plant in amongst all of it. Now Iga, with his carbine on the fire escape, is a dead man walking. Can he claim kills before he drops? No, is the resounding answer. It doesn't give a card away at the very least, but that's a clean sweep. That's exactly what the albino cats were looking for. They're finally getting their name on the board. Really, mostly off the back of a set nade from Davey. You know, two kills and put replan down real low. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> gotta, gotta, gotta get that pronunciation incorrectly. We are gonna see Cordy go for another set nade at middle. Not gonna land because Penta is focused someplace else. Alt mid is the target. Puck is the one leading the way with Cinda. Again, more of the entry fraggers for this team, I guess you could say. But Cordy's pushed through mid to connector and caught this alt mid pick. Taking down Puckus right away, getting the instant 5 on 4, then backing off, not overextending, not giving away for their opponents to play back into this. They're just resetting back towards spawn, Supreme watching Graveyard. Toxia has actually pushed Broken Building, and I think he actually peeked down short towards middle, so he, he knows that no one's really staging up outside B just yet. So that is definitely good information to have for the Albino Cats. I really like that push from Kurti as well, because typically they've been going fast at second mid, or they've been just going mm -hmm. fast on B, so... Putting yourself in connector is definitely a good way of, of catching them in transition, or getting a fast flank if it turns out they've already pushed through cinema, etc. That being said, Nade's gonna start to rein in. Try and deny the bomb plant, deny some lives, and Kurti... Proving that... The Brave are able to get some kills. Gonna go back in for seconds, but the shotgun is too strong. Davy, Alapov, and Supreme, all with Gavez. 
are going to get sprayed down by Cinders Thompson. And now Supreme, he's trying to get himself through on the cinema. I mean, really, all he can hope for at this point is they, they go lackadaisical with the bomb plant. He can deny that, and then they somehow get the win, but they're out of there. They are yeah, heading they are. to the church. It's going to be should close. should have time to plant. Yeah, I think it takes, what, three seconds to plant? Yeah, they got it. That's, that's also kind of ballsy. I mean, what they're effectively saying there is Supreme's normally the B player. Uh, sorry, he's normally the uh, the A player on Church. And for them to go like that fast, they, they've, they've called to themselves he's on the rotation. There's no way he's yeah. still on the Church. If he was yeah. in Church there and he takes the bomb planted down, that's it. That's the round's it. over. Yeah. I think it is more than three seconds. It might be like four and a half. I'm not sure. Someone in chat maybe can correct me. I, knew, I know that seven and a half is the defuse time, but don't have the plant time committed to memory just yet. Still learning this game, of course. Another round goes the way of Penta. So I think we've only really seen like one round here or there from from the Albino Cats. Like Penta's been pretty firmly in charge here from the Allied side on this half. They are going to be sending Iga back through again. So just kind of playing their default once more, letting Replin go to work with the scope, and boy does he, he takes down Qwerty. I get so confused of which bomb sites which because I know in the Alpha they were different. Yeah, they were. Cinema is B, though, and Church is A. Yeah, yeah. Because it used to be the other way around. One day so we'll get sight letters on the map. And it'll be that, that's good. the dream, isn't it? I'm where the bomb <laughs> drops as well. That would be that would actually be really useful for spectators. But that being said, we have already passed that. Howard's been DMing me all tournament long about things to add to specs. So, cool. 3v3. I'll be pushing through mid Isinda, and he will be given a card and a kill as a result. They're looking to push back onto A site once more. Toxie. He does have a car, and they have half a mind to try and save this. It really comes down to, does, does he think he can pull it off? Is mm. three rounds going to be enough? Because typically, a lot of teams will get a lot more success on the Axis side than they will allies. Sure, Puckets has been picked out, but this is where it gets a whole lot harder, because now they know which angle he's going to be coming from. Now they can set up a crossfire accordingly. He doesn't have the element of surprise any longer. Trying to play around through spawn. Gonna have to commit to playing towards uh, crossing this graveyard. Oh, Toxia takes down replay. That's a great shot. Will he be able to find Cinda though? No, Cinda playing up close with that. Thompson will be able to pick up the cards and recycle them. And they're up 7 3. Two rounds left to play in this half. And they are looking quite strong. And I have to applaud, like, kind of the tactical diversity of Penta. Like, we've kind of seen it all. We've seen a slower default, letting replay work to scope. We've seen some really set executes onto Cinema side with those smokes at back door and double doors and, like, just pushing really quickly. And then we've also seen some pushes through alt mid. So. They definitely have a couple of different set executes they can use as well as just kind of playing default and mid-rounding. And they've been successful with pretty much everything. And the Finns leading. 22 kills between the two of them, but now it's up to Toxie. Oh, with three kills with this car. Can he pick up a fourth? No. Froster will put an end to the killing frenzy. And now it's all up to the man I got. He hasn't had a, a great chance at getting any impact. I mean, typically he's been playing sort of high up in cinema. He's not been getting the impact frags. Yeah, yeah Froster has kind of said that he's kind of considering him like more of a support player, used for utility, used for kind of covering flanks. So not typically, I guess, one of the main action roles. He hasn't seen a whole lot, but he has to pull off something crazy here. The only thing really going for him is the element of surprise. Mm. But other than that, it's looking pretty ominous. The bomb is un in a position where he could salvage this, though. Yeah, but I they're peeking that for sure from mid. Yeah, yeah, Cody was watching with the car. 7 4. Big, big uh, car 98 kills that round. Definitely huge stuff. Really shut down Pint Pintus push. Like Cinda trying to push through with the Thompson. Several players trying to make their way through, but the car 98 just too strong over there at B for the likes of the Albino Cats. It's going to make it 7-4. to four. One round left to play. So a good chance for Albano Cats to keep this thing close if they can come up with this one. They have several grenades to throw out in this round. They do throw a couple of set in, but I think they messed one up and it kind of bounced back. So they didn't actually get it out onto mid. So Replan able to kind of hold his ground with the scope at middle and look to maybe take a shot here. No one's going to be sniping back at him, though. I think Davey's kind of cautiously checking it out with the default class. This time, a bit more slow-paced. Froster 
with the kill. He's gonna get tagged down to four health, but he's gonna be able to replenish what was lost. Toxia and Alipov playing very passive at the back of B. They're not going aggressive. They're not looking for information. And as a result, Cinder is able to prime up a nade and land it right on the head of Quirty. Toxia has gone down as well, but Supreme Ants is back with one and a second. But surely his days are numbered. He's been tagged up so heavily. But Alipov has came in to help him out. Now it's up to Aiga, who should be able to get round the back of Alipov and take him down. Once Alipov falls, the House of Cards should come crumbling afterwards. That's what Pin is certainly waiting for, you have to imagine, is what Bro, can Aiga do on this flank? Aiga, he's right there! He didn't see him prone on the floor there. Your gun he, model does block it when you come around the corner, to be fair. He, mate, he clearly saw him there on the floor. I, he okay. must have thought it was a corpse. That's the Maybe. only thing I can think of. Could be the corpse, could be that his gun model blocked it. Did he catch that? Sure. I didn't see it from his... Oh, okay, hopefully we'll see it on stream. I didn't catch it, unfortunately. I, I, nonetheless, I was trying to come up with an explanation. He did catch it, alright. Yeah, I can only assume he thought it was a corpse. That's the only thing I can think of, because he, he basically, like, took a card and switched a weapon, I think, while the guy was prone, and he stood up and he was like, oh my god, there's, there's a guy there. I'll just shoot him. Yeah. Just well done by Penta to push middle. Supreme did a pretty good job covering up for most of it and trying to bring it back for his team, but the attack on mid is too strong, and then the Iga flank certainly was kind of the checkmate move, and now they're up 8-4. They'll now move on to the defense. Replan trying to go off of the scope at middle through the smoke. Not going to connect, and Cinda's already been taken down in this round. Big attack on the church right now from Abano Cats. They're already in there. That's a hell of a spot that Replan just used to look into the... The second mid side of church. Just perched up, you can see them all run in. He only got two kills. Buck is gonna be joining him. Three players remain, but they're gonna look to try and force the bomb down. Replant's gone back up there again. That is a six spot. I'm definitely using that. Yep. Meanwhile, Kurti onto Buckis. Gonna even the odds. This is where the sniper for replant could be more of an issue. They've got two smokes, but they're not necessarily gonna be useful when they look to push back onto the site. It's very close range. That could actually benefit the defending allies. It could cordon off the own areas that they want to push into. This is a real sticky situation. The only good news, though, is that the bomb still hasn't been planted. So we've been here before where an allied team kind of waits a bit too long and then effectively plays them out of the round. They're going to fake it one more time. Replan has the angle to try and spam through the bomb box. Alipov once again fakes it. Out comes Replant, and he's going to connect one, and looking for more. He's hit the shot onto Alipov, who has to come off the site one more time. Again, indecision oh! right now. Oh my god, what a shot onto Supreme that was. And he, Replant will win the round with some of the sickest sniping that you will see. Get the hell out of here, Replant. What a joke of a shot that was, man. I can't even believe he hit that. Did so much damage on his own, really. Taking out one player, getting the bomb planner off, then just hitting a crazy shot to cap it all off. Fantastic individual play from Replan. Ruben missed the shot. FML. I, I got it on my stream, to be fair. So someone can clip it from my stream. Shameless plug, maybe, but that deserves to be clipped. It was sick. Meanwhile, 9-4. Here's Davey in a duel to the death with Puckis in mid. So mid control has been assumed. And will go the way of the allies. Toxier, broken building. Gonna spam across with his SMG. Supreme onto Frosta. And now Aiga is gonna be stepping up to the plate. It's just back and forth, but it's favoring the allies so far. It's a solid position that Aiga's gone for, but he needs somebody else to help him out from the likes of Broken Wall. Otherwise, he's way too vulnerable. Toxie ain't gonna fake the plant, the nades out more than anything else with the fake bomb plant. But no one's biting on the axes because simply put, they don't have nades to use. Yeah, Replin has a good little spot here that he can maybe start trying to chip away at the bomb planner once again. And he does get the hit, but he's Fox is just gonna try to stick it, but he can't. Replin kills him for it, but now he's all alone in a one versus three. We've already seen him hit some crazy shots. He needs some more to do this one, and he's starting it off just right. He's gotten another kill. The bomb does get planted by Supreme. He's in a 1v2. He's trying to push forward. Grabs the STG, running around, trying to tap, trying to draw some out, but there's just no chance for him there. 9-5. Close. Very close. I was beginning to believe in uh, Replan. 
very much like Neo. He's my own personal Neo, but not that time. Either way, he's gone straight back into a sniper, which I'm happy to see. The card situation is looking a bit ominous for the allies now, though. They're lacking on a couple of them. So we'll see some more carbines as a result of that to maybe bolster up the other cards for a little while. Replant, trying to no-scope through the smoke. Cinema control has been taken here, sort of. Frost was actually pushing up top, though, so he could certainly be catching someone from the Allied side who's trying to set up some nades over on that B-bomb site. Supreme will go down low. Froster does spot out one, but unable to get the frag, and the bomb is going to start getting planted here inside the site. Frost start hopping back and forth on the fire escape, and oh, he's going to get himself a knife. Alipov gets a bit too close. And that blade will be stained in his blood. A replan point blank range, headshotting Toxia overkill. Plan is on a different planet right now. The way this guy is playing is absolutely nuts. Davy, up into fire escape, wants to pick up the card. And the bomb, I think, as well, was up there. We'll be able to collect it. But oh, Supreme is getting tattered from behind. He should have had that kill dust. I don't know if you saw that, but he, had, he basically had him free, dead to rights. There, there he goes. goes. Makes amends for it, but it's going to cost him his life. He would have had a chance to maybe even take Davy down had he landed that shot the first time around. You're correct. The bomb was up in fire escape. You just saw it there on the floor. Davy's going to have it come down. Will they down. expect this reposition from Reaper? I don't think That's so. the real question. They, they don't have a whole earlier. lot of time to figure it out. They've got to stick this plant. He's going to get the kill. That should be it. That's it, indeed. Replant. Replant's a freaking god at this game. Can we just say that? His scoping's been unreal every time we've watched him play. Well, that's it. That's all the analysis I got. 10 to 5. Replant, 17 kills, 7 deaths. But what that doesn't show is how many impactful frags this guy has had. Almost every single one of his kills has been a round changer. He's been on the spot constantly. Gonna be peering through mid again, no one's there. It's gonna be more of a hit towards second mid. Mm -hmm. Four players strong, just Davey by himself is currently watching over on the B side of the map. And Puckis comes through with two kills with the car. More like it. He's been quite quiet so far in this game, but he hasn't necessarily been required. He's on 8 and 13, but when you've got the likes of Replan and Cinder doing all the work, Iger with the 1. This is looking incredibly poor right now for the Allies. This would be them 11-5 behind Dust, and surely that's a bridge too far. And he'd certainly think so. I mean, that's kind of a, a case where I feel like Albino Cats' smoke at middle became their own worst enemy. Because, yeah, you're smoking middle and you're blocking off replant sniper, which seems almost required at this point. But it also allows, because you've put that smoke down, for allies to push through their side of middle into connector and get vision on alt mid. That's basically what Puckus does with the Car 98. He just uses that smoke that the allies have thrown and use it, uses it for himself to make a move and then pops off two kills. So, I mean... Really well done here by Penta as they will move up to 11 unless Davy and Supreme can pull off the clutch, but Cinda's already halfway there to stopping that from happening. It's just Supreme. He's alone on A. He is just unfortunately without a bomb. Big problem. Or he might have it. I'm not sure. I don't think he does. Yeah, unfortunately, where... we can't see where bomb down is at on the radar just right. yet. So Exactly. That's, that would be super helpful at a time like this, but he is Billy no mates, and judging from the fact with eight seconds left, he's just staying here prone. Yeah, this round is, is all but done. Uh, he wants to keep a hold of this shotgun. As I said before, the cards are starting to run dry, and since then they've lost a couple rounds, so it's going to be even worse. 11-5, though. Just two rounds shy of going to the grand finals, and I believe they'll be playing the Bang, who got far in the yep. last Blitzkrieg battle as well. Weren't they in the finals against I Ocelots? believe so, yeah. I think they lost in the finals. So they came second. Yeah. Certainly did. Definitely some names you might recognize on that team too, like Jay Money and Saint Six. Some UK players, got two. I will say, no disrespect, but they did get a bit bit more fortunate on the bracket draw. Because um, oh, yeah. there was three or four really sick teams that, that were at the top side of the bracket, but take nothing away from the bang. Certainly not as Penta already going away at perhaps a 12th round in this one. 
Buckus and company already getting some kills. Frost are pushing up close on Cinema against Supreme. Finds that one as well. So everything seems to be going Penta's way. And I hate seeing this from Albino Cats. They played so well against Article 51. I was hoping that this would be like another really tight game, really back and forth affair. Give us a little bit of something epic like we saw in the last match, but Penta has been very dominant here. And it continues to play out that way as Froster finds two more to end it from up top with the STG. It's now 12-5. It's looking very good for Penta right now. Yeah, seven match points. Showing no signs of slowing down. Uh, it's been a rough day at the office for Nala here. Kanala, sorry. Or Alapov. He is struggling at 5 for 14, but that's just been one of those kind of games Penta have looked ruthless. It hasn't just been replant. Like, obviously, he's landed some highlight real stuff, but Cinder's been chugging along very well. Frost has also been chiming in. They've all been solid. Toxie straight through on to the broken building. Iger, though, with two big shotgun frags, but it may not be enough to hold on the site just yet. Smoke goes down. Toxie Thinking about going for the plant, but instead he's going to fake it again. And now Sin is able to get himself around the side. Puckis lands himself a frag. And again, you've got a question. These constant fakes rather than going for the full plant. Is that costing them far too much? The Albino Cats have been in positions they could have won many, many times. But now Toxie, one on three. They're already calling the GG well played. He's going to pick up one. I never liked that. I feel like it, it kind of disrespects your teammate. You have no faith in them at all. Even though it's very unlikely that Toxie will clutch this. Yeah, I agree. It's happened a lot throughout this tournament. Definitely would like to just see them let it play out first before the GG's ring out. It's not quite over yet, though. There's 30 seconds left. You also mm -hmm. one of these players. Oh, he's got a Thompson. He's so incredibly strong up close. He's trying to fake as though he's going towards broken building, and Puckis will peek him and get the GG finally here. So, to the finals, we will have Penta up against the Bang in the best of three. Yep, so it'll be the Bang returning to the finals, which they were in the first.